John Elway is still the guy leading the Broncos, but the team added some front office help heading into the 2021 season. George Payton has 23 years of draft experience as a scout, but this will be the first one calling the shots, and it's impossible to ignore that his biggest challenge will be to address the inconsistent play at the quarterback position. Drew Locke could still end up being a franchise quarterback, but if we're calling it today, the former Zoo quarterback would be on the list highlighted by the misses by John Elway in drafting quarterbacks. The next quarterback taken in this draft by George Payton will hope to avoid the list joining here along with Paxton Lynch and Brock Osweiler. With more on the Broncos, let's say good morning to Jason Locke and for our NFL insider joining us here on CBS Sports HQ. So when we take a look at Denver, Jason, what are the chances the Broncos trade up to get a quarterback from where they are right now? I'd be surprised, Tommy. Um, I have been reporting for a while now um, at CBSSports.com that uh, Denver's the front runner to land Teddy Bridgewater. And in the end, I think that's where Teddy Bridgewater will end up. George Payton, their GM at Denver, the new GM, drafted Bridgewater in Minnesota. That team is set up. They want to run the ball. They want to play defense uh, and then hit a big play when it's there. But, but don't force it. Don't turn it over. Don't be a double agent. That's what Bridgewater is. I mean, Bridgewater was drafted in Minnesota by Mike Zimmer. Vic Fangio is basically Mike Zimmer. I mean, they're kind of sort of the same guy. Finally got their head coaching shot very late in their career. Defensive-minded, conservative to their core. So a move up now for a quarterback, I don't see it. Now, if, if, if Fields or, or, or Lance are sitting there at nine, could it give them some pause? Yeah, but that's also a spot where they could trade out. All things being equal, if they stay where they are at nine, I think they end up going defense. Maybe that's a Micah Parsons, the do-everything linebacker from Penn State, who certainly comes with some serious character concerns. Or maybe it's one of the top two corners in the draft, Patrick Sertain or J.C. Horn. All right, so Denver in that interesting 7-8-9 slot of the NFL draft. And you mentioned the Panthers and potentially having Teddy Bridgewater come over to Denver in some form there. Let's talk about Carolina, though, which sits at eight right now. And you mentioned if a quarterback ends up being there at nine, what if they're there at eight? They just got Sam Darnold, Jason, but one of those top prospects is there for Matt Rule and company. What do you think the thought is of maybe entertaining another rookie quarterback? You have to consider it, and obviously Matt Rule is very familiar with all these young men because he's fresh out of the college game. He recruited a lot of them. I think it will depend on our four already gone, our three already gone. If I mean, could five already be gone? Um, I think all things being equal, they would like to trade down. They don't have the abundance of picks a lot of rebuilding teams have had, and I know that's something that's graded on the owner there. David Tepper, who is incredibly analytically minded, and all the analytics people will tell you, obviously, the more arrows you have to throw at this um, this dartboard with luck clearly involved, we need to take as many swings as we can. And they haven't been doing that. Sam Darnold's young enough. Um, I think they feel like they have potentially solved that riddle there. Uh, and then the question becomes, is again, how many are on the board? How far back will we have to go? Um, what are we picking up in return? Are we getting just picks? Are we getting some players as well? Um, and then if, if they stay there at eight um, and you just start looking at some of their immediate needs, that, that's another team uh, that, that could badly use an impact corner. They started fixing their, their back end last year with Jeremy Chin. I could see them maybe taking the top corner on the board. All right. Uh, what are we to make about Carolina not picking up Sam Darnold's fifth-year option until after the draft that they're saying here, Jason? Look, I, I don't think they made this trade as a rental or, or a look-see. They, they, sur they, they sized up this market. They did a, a, an abundance of work on Deshaun Watson. That obviously became a non-starter due to things unrelated to football. They did work on any quarterback who could potentially be acquired via trade. That wasn't going to manifest itself. And they did work on all these quarterbacks. And, and once you saw San Francisco jump to three... Carolina did, you know, they, they ascertain who they think those three quarterbacks are going to be. Who else is left? The likelihood that one of them's there for us. What would it cost to move up? And they ruled that out. And, and again, went with Sam Darnold. Not a guy who's 30-something, but a guy who's still 20-something. So when they pick it up, they have until, um, you know, the first week of May to do so. I think they'll do it. It's only an injury guarantee anyway. If he, if he comes in and plays good football, 
they're going to try to extend him sooner rather than later. And I don't think he'd be playing out that fifth year season either way. Um, Again, it's not a full ironclad across the board guarantee. So it provides some flexibility. But I think you also, you know, want to make sure that this kid's head's on where you want it to be. You'd ideally like to get him in your building for at least a little bit before you do it. But I, I think Sam Darnold will be there if he plays remotely well beyond 2021. And I think he'll do it on a new contract. Yeah, Sam Darnold still just like 23 years old, still has a chance to build himself a career. Let's end with the Washington football team. They made the postseason last year, largely due to that defensive front. But let's talk about the quarterback position. They get Ryan Fitzpatrick sort of on a, a one-year type thing here. Jason, what about targeting some quarterback? Uh, doesn't have to be early rounds, but just in general, what do you think the draft plan is for Ron Rivera and company? I think they're going to most likely stay where they are and see what's still on the board. Can they get someone to affect the ball in the air to help their defense? Whether that's a corner they really like, um, whether that's a safety like uh, Trevon Murray out of uh, TCU. Uh, I think he may be earmarked for the Raiders. Uh, Washington moving up. And there's, some, there's difference of opinion in how these quarterbacks are stacked in that building. And you know what? That's true across a lot of places in the board. If Justin Fields fell out of the top 10, could Washington move up a little bit to break his fall? Uh, it wouldn't shock me, but I, I think a lot of things would have to fall into place for them to be in a position where they're moving up, you know, two to five spots, not 10. Jason locking forward with the Washington football team, the Carolina Panthers, and the Denver Broncos. Jason, certainly appreciate it as always. Make sure to catch the Pick 6 podcast. They'll be getting you ready for... The draft, Will Brinson and company have the mock draft Monday, 11.0. All 32 first-round selections made in their final pre-draft mock. Make sure you download and follow today. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.